evening YouTube and Gundam fans. I hope you all had a wonderful New Year's Eve and I have decided to do another model kit review on the high grade Universal Century Nemo unicorn version with desert colors. Now with that said I did show this suit briefly in the previous model kit review when I did the HGUC F91. So now I'd like to go ahead and take a look at this one. This is the Nemo. Now, I don't think that he's any different than the other high-grade unicorn version of the Nemo, aside from the darker body color and the tannish white uh, arms and legs, and of course head. Now, I have to say I'm a fan of Zeta Gundam, which is where this suit originated from, and I've liked what I've seen so far of Gundam Unicorn. So, you know, that's a win-win there. The kit itself is really nice and very articulate. In fact, it's one of the better model kits that I've seen. And it is one of the newer ones. So, I'll go ahead and show you some articulation. The head can rotate if you watch his collar pretty good. You really have to do some shifting there. But he can go a full 360. But the neck guard will prove a little problem, especially since he's got these, uh, I guess they're radio pieces on the sides of the head. Now, the body can move up and down, and it won't turn 360 degrees. In fact, it starts right about there, uh, but it is on a ball joint in the waist, and then another one in the stomach. The arms can rotate 360 degrees and they can go out about that far so he can get some reach. Elbows will go 90 degrees and hands can rotate 360 but the arms at the bicep will also rotate. Now the skirts will go out, now mine are separated they will go out all the way up to there. I don't know if you can see that. They'll go out all the way to there. And the leg can get a good forward bend. And it can't go back because the back skirt does not go back. So, side skirts go out that far. And the legs will go out that far with them. Now I've got two complaints with this kit and they're nothing too serious the first one being the legs and I don't know if the camera will show it the legs have this crack in them where they connect to the um, hip now I thought at first that that meant the leg would fall off some like some of the older high-grade kits but no you could shake the thing around rattle it real good and it's not going to come loose too much I mean, it's pretty secure. And the legs will rotate all the way around. I'll bend at the knee about 90 degrees. They are not double jointed at the knee. So, that's mm, sort of a negative on articulation there. Now, the foot, which is really nice, it can go forward about that far and back about that far. And then, of course, the um, ankle guard can move. As for um, the legs themselves, they're extremely detailed. I mean, you can see a lot of the inner workings in here. They're really nice. Uh, I like the molding of the plastic. And that pretty much does it for articulation. He's not one of the more articulate suits. Well, kits, I mean to say, in the high grade line. And that's a little disappointing. But he does make up for it with some of his um, accessories, and I'll show those to you now. I'll go ahead and start off with my favorite, the Bullpup machine gun. I think it was 90 millimeter in the TV series. And uh, the f hands that it comes with are angled at the ball joint on the wrist so that you can hold the machine gun like so and I think that looks really good um, now I'm not paneling any of this kit so 
I'm sure it'll look a whole lot better when I get that far. A second gun that he comes with is the standard uh, beam rifle that you saw the AU Confederation using. And it, it, um, one thing that I really look for in kits is the foregrip on the rifle can move. And I think that's really nice. But here's a neat little trick. There's little square, well, rectangular knobs on the side, and he's got a space in the front skirt, and you can just stick those in the front skirt, and he can have it as a sidearm. So, you know, if you were doing some poses and wanted to make it look like he had a spare weapon, yeah. there you go. Now, for even more accessories, I'll go ahead and show you the Nemo shield. Now, you may notice it's awfully short, but it's got a square space. You just pop them apart and you slide it down. And it's got a square hole that its knob hooks into. And then it can be plugged into either arm because both have a uh, hole in the bottom of them. And so you can plug it in there, no problem. It looks pretty good with it. And I wish that it could slide back and forth, but since it does have the spaces for it to hook together when the shield is either long or short, it holds it pretty securely. So, you know, not a lot of complaining there. Now, you come with, it comes with two beam sabers. They're clear pink beams and they both have a hilt of course with them. So, and any any beam from the high grade line will fit and they they can go into the little piece on the back of his waist on the back skirt armor and it holds pretty good, but here's my complaint as far as that goes. The Beam saber hilts. See, one of his hands is made to hold the sabers, of course. He doesn't hold it very well. I mean, it's, it's not going to fall out, but it wobbles around in the hand really badly. It doesn't hold it securely, and that's it's not a big deal. I know that sounds kind of petty, but we've come such a long way with the high-grade kits, and so you'd think that it would hold it a little bit better like some of the other ones do. And then he comes with an open hand. And that does it for the accessories. He doesn't have a lot, but there's not, there's not very many of the high-grade kits that have um, the Nemo-type claw shield or the uh, bullpup machine gun. And that's because there weren't a lot of suits in the Universal Century that used them. But, you know, I thought that because it's got a bit of a unique arsenal, that it, it was an interesting purchase. And I really, I really uh, do like this kit, even though it's not the most poseable. It looks good, and it's solid. It's very sturdy. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have anything to complain about there. Uh... But I will, I will show you one last really nice thing that they did. See, it comes with a lot of uh, black hands, you know, just some extra hands. Two of them are closed fist, and one is for holding beam sabers, and the other is an open hand. doesn't come with any extra trigger fingers, which kind of stinks. But, you know, the only, the only thing about these is the Nemo hands are white. The hands, the extras that it comes with, are black on the back. And so, it, mm, you know, it's good to have those for other kits. They would look really good on, like, the high-grade GM3 or something like that. Because the, the, it would fit any of the other high-grades really well. But, at the same time, it would have been even nicer if they'd have had the white on the back of the hands. That way, you know, you could use them for the GM because it's got an open hand on the left side and here's an open right hand. So if it had that white back, it would look better. He could have two open hands uh, for combat or whatever, which I guess you could take the Y off of any of these hands and put them on these. But 
that would still kind of defeat the whole purpose. But, you know, that's pretty much all I've got for the high grade Nemo. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on how it relates to the other high grade Nemos, but alone, I think it's really nice. Um, I'm considering getting some of the other ones just to compare them and maybe um, swap some accessories because I'm sure that there's some minor differences in them because there's three different ones now. So uh, with that said, don't forget to rate and if you like what you saw, subscribe. If not, then you know, give me your feedback. I'll see what I can do better and hopefully next time I will have better camera quality. But we can only get better, so y'all have a good evening.